Hi, I'm Don West Jr., and this is Stephen Morrison. And Stephen was just with us today at the UU Fellowship of Laguna Beach, and he gave us an amazing talk on the spiritual workout and politics. It's coming up right here for you next. Check it out. You got anything to say to the people, Stephen? Can't wait to talk to you about the spiritual workout for politics. The spiritual workout for politics, getting ready for the 2020 election cycle, coming at you right now. Enjoy. talk about those things together. <laughs> so that sort of leaves me out of the conversation because talking about spirituality all day, every day is kind of what I'm up to. I've made it my life's work. And I think that if we don't merge these two subjects together pretty darn soon, things are going to get a whole lot worse. So for those of you who don't know me or don't know anything about the spiritual workout, which I assume is most of you, very quickly, I'm a former psychotherapist. I kind of morphed out of that and became the spiritual workout guy. And I still talk to people about the same kinds of issues that they talk to their therapists and their intimates about. But first and foremost, we take the perspective of the being part of the human beings that we are. That's step number one. Step number two, then, is we just filter whatever's going on with us individually or collectively or within a group um, through a collection of 15 ancient, universal, spiritual concepts that I'm going to take you through in just a minute. Uh, and the whole practice is just a relentless application of and adherence to these concepts. So, so you'll know what I'm talking about. They are, be compassionate, beliefs matter, be present, choices abound, everything is energy, have an attitude of gratitude, intentions matter, judgments separate us, Listen to inspiration. Mind and body are connected. Take responsibility. That's everyone's favorite. The law of attraction is always on. We are all connected. We are here for a reason. And finally, we belong to the planet, not the planet to us. So the stance I take is that I don't really have anything to offer in terms of teaching, I didn't make these concepts up. I'm just somebody who believes that, as I say, adhering to them, living by them, maintain as a means to maintain the perspective of the being parts of the human beings we are, tends to lead us to feeling better about things, to being more happy, joyful, higher purpose, deeper meaning, greater satisfaction. I personally, I'm willing then to share this practice from that perspective. I'm not unique or special or different, but I have reached a point with regard to this subject where, yes, I can yell and scream at the TV. <laughs> yes, I can get into it with people in my world. But for the most part, my head doesn't explode and my heart doesn't really break. Or really, my heart breaks all the time and yet it doesn't. And I think it's because of some of the things that we're going to talk about today. We don't have much time. So what I'd like to do is really focus on three considerations. The first is context. The second I call activism. Whether it's amateur or professional, you're an activist. If you care, you're an activist. If you're paying attention, you're an activist. If you write a check, you're an activist if you volunteer somewhere, go to a rally, any of those things. And maybe you're somebody whose job it is to be an activist, to advocate for a particular issue or cause. And then we'll touch for a moment on what we do when others in our sphere have <clears throat> different ideas, like what Pat was saying earlier. <laughs> OK, so. The first consideration is context. 
And the context for everything that I have come to believe is going on in our world right now is that there is an old consciousness, an old way of human beings being human here in these bodies on this planet that is essentially dying, it's in hospice, it's not going to exist at some point in the not too distant future, and at the same time, an entirely new consciousness is being born. That, for me, and for now other people that I get to work with, is again the frame within which everything else is kind of happening. Now, without getting overly bogged down, essentially the new consciousness has been steeped in masculine energy. It's full of judgment and binary choices, right, wrong, good, bad, friend, enemy. And we create in the old consciousness in a very linear fashion. We set a goal or, or an objective, we move toward it, we take some actions, we achieve a certain result, we keep going or we start over on the next project. Nothing wrong with any of that, it's just dying away. So the new consciousness, not surprisingly, is basically the opposite of those things. In the new consciousness, first and foremost, the divine feminine is emerging. And it's not to take over, but it's to integrate with the divine masculine. And so we start to see non-linearity take hold as a hallmark of the new consciousness. We start to see non-binary choices emerging. Right? So more and more people in the political realm are saying, I am neither that nor that. I'm somewhere in the middle. I don't want to stay. I don't feel right in one place or another. We're seeing more and more people identify as transgender or non-gender. They're not comfortable in one place or the other, but somewhere in the middle. These, this, to me, is evidence of the new consciousness emerging. And if you think of one thing that will guide the new consciousness, it's the concept of compassion. It has not been utterly absent in the old consciousness, nor has it been the place from which we are making our choices and our decisions. So, with that in mind, Spiritual workout-wise, first and foremost, beliefs matter, that's one of our concepts. What do we believe about what's going on when we turn on the news, when we look at a newspaper, when we listen to something and talk to our friends? I just offered a particular way that people can think about or believe what's happening. If I believe that the world is going to hell on a handbasket, and it's Armageddon, and it's dark, then I'm going to often feel anxious and fearful and hopeless and afraid and things like that. If I believe, on the other hand, that there's a new consciousness coming, that we are in a transition, that as the old one dies away and the new one is being born, it's like... We're in a process of, let's say, making a smoothie, right? So I'm going to make a new, delicious, nutritious smoothie, and I'm going to take some of these ingredients, and here's this ripe banana, and in it goes, and here's a handful of beautiful, off-the-bush strawberries and a few really fresh uh, blueberries. Strawberries go in there, right? And I put the lid on, and I... Start, start it up. And then the phone rings, so I stop and I come back. Now if I look at that blender at that moment and what's inside of it, I'm going to think, oh my God, this is awful, this is terrible, this is the worst thing I can imagine. There's death and destruction and that banana looks, it's mangled and there's violence and it's unattractive and it's unpleasant. But when I finish the process, hit that button again, let it do its thing, well now I've got this beautiful new 
thing that didn't exist before, and it couldn't exist if not for the process of transformation that has occurred. So we can believe anything we want about what's going on, but I promise you, if we can believe something in the realm of what I'm talking about, then because beliefs matter, beliefs create experience, then we're going to have a very different experience. We're going to say, well, it is what it is, I can accept it as what it is, and trust that something else is happening. Again, it matters what we believe. Now, if I'm living in a swirl where there's all this old consciousness activity going on and new consciousness activity bubbling up, and in any given moment, in any given conversation, there can be both coming at me, how am I going to decipher? Being able to decipher is going to be critical. And so that decipher mechanism is what we call in spiritual workout, listening to inspiration. That's about our gut, our intuition, our feelings. So if in the course of events, I start feeling anxious, I start feeling fearful, hopeless, and all manner of not good feelings, then I know I'm thinking something that is not in alignment with truth and not in alignment with the being part of the human being I am, and this will be true for all of us. If, however, I start to feel more energized, more aligned, more curious, more interested, that is how I start to know that I'm more in the area of the quote-unquote right place, and by right I just mean what's right for me on a feeling level. And finally, if we're in the midst of old and new and old and new and old and new, and we're in transition, and we're having aspects of the old and aspects of the new coming at us all the time, then choices abound really make sense. I have a choice where to focus my attention. Do I want to focus it on the part of what's going on that's old and dying, or do I want to focus it on what's being born. We constantly, constantly, constantly are making choices, and when we are in transition, choosing on purpose where to put our energy is a real skill. Now, moving on to activism, I want us to consider two ideas. One, the law of attraction is always on. For what it is, I'm preferring to experience. That's good practice individually, and it's certainly good practice when it comes to our activism. So what do I mean by this? A few years ago, I was working on the issue we call homelessness in San Francisco. I went to an event. Uh, the opening session was a parade of nonprofits coming up one after the other, after the other, after the other, talking about what we're going to do this weekend and the individual needs of these different organizations. Every single one of them had the word homeless in their title, and every single one of them talked about being part of working on the homelessness issue in San Francisco for 25 years, for 35 years, for 50 years. I'm looking around, I'm in a room of about 300 people, and I felt like I was the only one who thought maybe this sounded a little crazy. In other words, all of the attention, all of the focus, all of the energy of well-meaning, big-hearted people who really want to solve an issue, but they're focused entirely on the issue. So when it comes to our activism and a spiritual workout approach to it, the better practice, if you ask me, is to align first with the solution. What is it that's going on? The issue is homelessness. Am I able to, and are we able to, articulate a vision for the solution? What does it look like when there's housing for everyone? Can we start changing our language from homeless, homelessness and hearing that word over and over again to housing for everyone or something like it? Can I, can we, articulate and think very clearly and rationally about what's it like when there's housing for everyone? when every city in America you walk down the streets and people feel safe and the streets are clean and people have good energy and they're smiling and, and talking with one another. 
Are we focused on the problem or are we focused on the solution? And again, even if we're armchair activists and we're sitting at home and we're railing against something and we want to write a check, before you write the check, just align with the solution first. Why am I writing a check? Well, this organization is really going to help with this issue. Okay, great. How are they going to help? What is the solution? What does it look like when there's no longer need for my giving here? And then from that place of alignment with a shiny, clear intention of what's actually preferred, we bring an entirely different energy to whatever we're doing, to our work, like I said, just writing a check or going to a rally or signing up to volunteer for a particular cause, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Am I making sense? Absolutely. Okay, great. Moving right along, because I know we don't have tons of time. So this comes up all the time. Again, Pat brought it up earlier. Sometimes we are in situations where we are with people, especially these days, who have a very different point of view. Now, one approach is just we're not going to talk about it. We love each other. We're family members. We're whatever. And we're just going to not even engage. It's perfectly fine. You've got to do what feels right. But I also know for a fact that many of us, for one reason or another, either we're seeking it out or we just can't seem to avoid it. And here we are, dealing with somebody who we know is coming from a very different place. So I'll offer up just one way to really contend with that. We're talking about beliefs again, and we're going to talk about compassion. So let's use the example of a wall going up or not going up on the southern border of our country. I personally think that's not the best idea in the world. I understand that there are other people who think it's a really good idea. If I start engaging those people, it's a good idea, it's a bad idea, it's a good idea, it's a bad idea, you're a jerk, you're an idiot. It kind of stays there. Where we can go in a way that will depersonalize that whole conversation is to talk from a place of belief. And what you'll find is that then first and foremost, you will be challenged to be clear about what it is you're believing. So in this example, let's see, off the top of my head, I would be saying, you know, I believe that all people are created equal, that no human being is better than another human being, no matter what. And it sounds to me, when you're talking this way, that uh, some of us are better than others. Or I have a belief that, as an American citizen, immigration is critical to the success of our country. I firmly believe that. And I can go on and on and talk about why I believe that. I might also say that I believe, personally, that our policy should be rooted in compassion, a new consciousness idea. So now I'm sharing of myself. I'm talking about beliefs. I'm not talking about anybody else. And I'm inviting them to do the same. Now that person might look at me and say, blah, 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 blah. I, I don't know what I believe, and that's okay. We're going to be compassionate. Being compassionate means fundamentally, oftentimes, just listening listening really well. I don't have to agree with you, but I want to understand, what are you believing? Why do you think this is such a good idea? So then, one of two things is going to start to happen. One of us or the other might start to change a belief. That could happen. Very often, though, what, will, what you will see in the context of old and new consciousness <laughs> is that this belief system and this belief system are starkly different. And guess what? They're not meant to coexist. In the future, one consciousness is going to give way to the other. They're not meant to coexist, but we are living in a moment where they're all here. So that's where that conversation goes and says, okay, we agree to disagree, but it's a way to do it without fighting and mostly without being personal about it. So, those are just a few of the ideas that I chose to focus on for our little chat this morning. Spiritual Workout for Politics. Oakley was asking me earlier, do you do this talk a lot? And I 
you know, in, in my mind, I do it all the time. <laughs> uh, but only recently has there, does there seem to be uh, some more interest in it than maybe five years ago, even, or certainly 10 or 15. So the way I'm doing that right now, without uh, spending too much time, is on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube and just search Spiritual Workout for Politics, you'll see three videos that we started with last week. For now, you know, I would love nothing more than to see some comments there and some questions. Everything that I have to offer is in response to people's issues and concerns. So if any of this is interesting and you want to keep the conversation going, that would be the way to do it. And thank you very much.